What formula did you use to be able to predict Evergrande was going to bank it's going to be bankrupt? And are you concerned their collapse will affect us? Um, this form is really simple. Uh, Wall Street Journal, CNBC Pro, Barons, and then fortunately, some people who are uh, who were in Red Panda at the time were actually in abroad in China. So once you like, everyone wants a formula for investing. And as we go into Investfest, I've been really thinking about this. But um, and I know you guys had an amazing interview with Dave Shans. But my my talk with him earlier this year. Like reading those 50 pages a day, it will give you a lot of insights. And I've told this to Stock Club, but when you read like a physical version of a paper or a publication, there's often insights in there that is not in the web version. I know it shouldn't be that way, but it is. Um, and once I started, I think I read maybe 70 articles on Evergrande and probably 40 videos on it. And the signs were very What clear. is it? What is it for? Uh, Evergrande is like one of the biggest real estate companies in China. Mm -hmm. So I said, I think it was this time last year in 2022. Like if 20, they went, uh, 2021, the downfall began. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So, so I said it like if they began to have troubles, we were going to feel the effects of it. And here we are. And uh, it's being reported now that China uh 40 year boom is over. They're raising, you know, have some fears around an extended slump. Their economy is not doing well. Their rate, they're having rate issues now as well in that race to try and beat us there were some things that they didn't manage well so this is like the version of the 2007 crisis that we went through they're kind of going through now but since china is one of the leading economies and they own so much of our debt that's why i kept my eyes closely on this but if you go through on any particular subject like if you read 50 to 70 articles and like 30 to 40 videos on it you will have every angle down to a science on what's truly happening in um that particular case and I, I hate that this is happening but as a result um some of the smaller players are going to fall out as well and it's going to spread over here to the to the u.s as well yeah this is uh it's kind of like remember in field of dreams it was like if you build it they will come yep and then you keep building and you keep building and then the, the people never come yeah so now you have a bunch of commercial real estate you have a bunch of res residential real estate that nobody's living in Mm -hmm. Right. And so when the government looks at it, they're like, wait, we got to figure out how to slow this down. Right. Because if we don't, there's going to be a collapse, like, like kind of what you're seeing now. And so yeah. they, they take the efforts to say, all right, well, well, let's slow down on the borrowing. But people who are trying to develop it, when you do that, then you got to raise rates to make more money. Yeah. Right. So when you raise rates and people can't pay back debt, then you get what's happening with Evergrande. And so it should it, we be worried about it in the U.S.? Absolutely. I think so. Number one, uh, because it's a model that if we don't, and there's a couple of companies and we'll get into it. If, if we don't look at this model and say like, this is not effective and this is something that could be replicated and could actually be even worse for us, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be, we'd be foolish. Absolutely. Um, some we have to have a real conversation about what are realistic growth rates in every industry. And of course, when interest rates were at zero, it was easy to build. Now we're seeing the real builders, real entrepreneurs, the ones who are able to thrive now in these tougher conditions. These are the real companies to invest in. Um, I talked about it uh, over a year ago, but they had to move some university students into some of the buildings that they were building because they had so many vacancies. Some of these right. properties they've had to even tear down because they're ghost cities in China, like literally 60, um, floors up and no one's actually in those units and dave gross talked about this like the the big commercial real estate correction or collapse that we'll see it will start there it'll spread over here things are getting tight here we'll talk about we work in a little bit but i think we have to relook at the valuations of real estate across the board and just say they built too much and they got high off of the, the bubble of us being in the zero interest rate environment. A lot of this, the real estate companies started to be ran like tech companies. And now you have to reevaluate what they're really worth. And there's going to be a lot more cases of mixed use um, commercial spaces to offset the losses coming yeah. in the future. It's interesting because now I'm even thinking about it. Like even where we live, like I'm watching towers is being built, like mm -hmm. luxury apartment buildings, and I'm like, well, that's 15 now. Like, wh where are the people that are coming to live in these? Yeah. Right, especially if we're talking about economic hardship and we're talking about recessionary environments and interest rates and inflation, 
And I'm like, but these towers keep going up. <laughs> like, what something's got to give, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, even in the microcosm, like where we live here in, in Westchester, it's like, are we setting ourselves up for that? Right? Because if the people don't come, then what now what happens to these properties? Destroys values. And for yep. the surrounding areas. Yep.